Hello everyone. In this class, we will try to learn what is acclimatization and disparism. Acclimatization: various physiological readjustment and compensatory mechanisms in the body that reduce the effect of hypoxia in permanent residents at high altitude is called acclimatization at high altitudes. Acclimatization is possible by the following compensatory mechanisms. The the increase in the pulmonary ventilation in acclimatized subjects the sensitivity of uh, respiratory center to hypoxia increases therefore even with a slight decrease of arterial po2 pulmonary ventilation increases and alveolar pco2 falls this increase in the pulmonary ventilation is maintained by active regulation of ph of csf and blood to normal levels decrease affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen under hypoxic conditions when a person is exposed to when uh, hypoxia at high altitude within us there will be increase in the amount of uh, 2 3 dpg this shifts the oxygen dissociation curve to the right releasing more oxygen from hemoglobin there will be rise in the hemoglobin concentration that is erythropoietin secretion increases promptly on ascent to high altitude Hypoxia is a powerful stimulus for erythropoietin secretion and thus activates erythropoiesis. This increase in circulating RBC triggered by erythropoietin begins 2 to 3 days and is sustained as long as the individual remains at high altitude. Changes that changes at tissue level which uh, to reduce the effect of hypoxia. There will be compensatory changes also occur in the tissues. where the increase there will be increase in the number of mitochondria which are the sites of oxidative reaction there will be increase in the cytochrome oxidase there will be increase in the myoglobin which facilitates the movement of oxygen in the tissues then there will be increase vascularity of hypoxic tissues hypoxia increases tissue capillary density that is more capillary open up hypoxia also causes vasodilatation therefore more oxygen can be supplied to the tissues there is increased diffusion capacity of lungs for oxygen this occurs due to the increase in the number of pulmonary capillaries secondary to increase in the pulmonary artery pressure pulmonary vasodilatation and increased pulmonary blood flow mountain sickness when a person ascends to high altitude he suffers from mountain sickness it starts approximately 8 to 12 hours after the arrival at the high altitude and lasts for about 4 to 8 days it is characterized by nausea vomiting headache insomnia dyspnea and irritability the exact cause of mountain sickness is not known but it appears to be associated with cerebral edema or alkalosis when a person ascends to high altitude the availability of oxygen in the inspired air decreases but the amount of carbon dioxide increases so in order to get adequate oxygen supply to the tissues there is an increase in the rate of respiration but consequently as the respiration rate increases there is more entry of carbon dioxide with inspired air therefore to facilitate the removal of carbon dioxide uh, and to permit the entry of oxygen into the tissues the respiration becomes periodic this is why periodic breathing is seen in unacclimatized person at high altitude coming to disparism disparism is also known as caisson's disease or decompression sickness or diverse palsy or bends a person after staying for a some time at higher barometric pressure if suddenly exposed to the low barometric pressure he suffers from a group of symptoms called disparism when the individual ascends rapidly to sea level after sufficient exposure to high atmospheric pressure deep in the sea the nitrogen is decompressed and escapes from the tissues at a faster rate being gas it forms the bubbles while escaping rapidly from the tissues the gases block the blood vessels producing tissue ischemia and sometimes tissue death caisson is an air chamber 
used to lower uh, individuals uh, to work deep under the sea. They suffered from disbarism and thus it is also called as Kaysen's disease. This problem was also faced by professional drivers and tunnel workers who were exposed to high barometric pressures. Some of the symptoms of disbarism are pain in the joints and muscles or leg or arms. The joint pain accounts uh, for the term bends and is often applied to this condition. The chokes, the chokes refer to the serious shortness of breath which is often followed by severe pulmonary edema and occasionally death. Neurological symptoms like dizziness, paralysis of muscles or collapse, paresthesia and unconsciousness may occur due to the blockage of blood vessels of brain and spinal cord. There can be paralysis of the muscles uh, and may occur temporarily due to the presence of nitrogen bubbles in the myelin sheath or motor nerve and this is called as diverse palsy. Coronary ischemia or myocardial infarction may occur due to the blockage of coronary capillaries by nitrogen bubbles. When a person stays at higher barometric pressure, his blood is equilibrated with uh, to the air of that pressure. So, all the gases dissolved in the blood uh, increase proportionately including nitrogen. Now, when the person is suddenly exposed to low barometric pressure, these gases are liberated from the blood. Carbon dioxide poses no problem as it can diffuse quickly and oxygen can be utilized by the tissues. But nitrogen bubbles cannot be got rid of easily because they obstruct the blood vessels and produce symptoms stated above. How to prevent disparism? Diver or caisson workers should come to the surface slowly. The treatment involved is the tank de decompression. Uh, it is the most important method uh, in treating people with whom the symptoms of decompression develops. In this case, the diver is uh, dry, uh, recompressed immediately uh, to a deep level. Then decompression is carried out over a slowly to normal atmospheric pressure. Note that risk of decompression of sickness can be reduced by breathing mixture of oxygen and helium during the dive. Nitrogen bubbles may not appear for many minutes to hours because sometimes the gas can remain dissolved in the super saturated state for hours before bubbling. Recovery is often complete but there may be residual neurological sequelae as a result of irreversible damage to the nervous system. Hiccup. Hiccup is a spasmodic contraction of the diaphragm and other respiratory muscles that produces an inspiration during which the glottis closes suddenly. The glottic pressure is responsible for a characteristic sensation and sound. Hiccup occurs in the fetus in utero as well as uh, throughout extra uterine life. Most attacks of hiccups are usually of short duration and they often respond to breath holding or other measures that increases arterial PCO2. This is in brief about acclimatization and disbarism. Thank you.